somewhere lost in the clouded annals of history, lies a place that few have seen. A mysterious place called the unknown. And we're about to go there in style as I sew Wirt's cape. Before we do that, though, we have to uh, venture into the greatest unknown of all, at least to me, the math. Stop screaming, stop crying, please. Okay, I'm here to help you, okay? I've drawn everything out, and of course I will leave a timestamp in case you're just here for the entertainment and the sewing and all that. But if you want the, like, all the numbers and all the fun stuff and all the very particular things right here, this is for you. So how I constructed Wirt's cape is that it's basically a circle. And let's face it, capes are just skirts for your neck. So what I had to figure out was the approximate length of all this because a circle can fit in a square and luckily that makes it easy for me because most fabrics are cut uh, from specific lengths and for that I tried to look for a 60 inch fabric, at least in width, except I couldn't find that. But I did go to Joann's and I found a 58 inch width of fabric and that way I could base all of my measurements off of that. So how I figured out how much fabric I needed was, well, of course, as I just said, a circle can fit inside of a square. So if I could cut it in a way in which I can fold it like this, I, as I explained later in the video, I folded it um, hot dog style and then hamburger style, and then I cut it based on that. So it would, it would turn into a complete circle and I just cut it out like that without having to cut all the way around and risk it being really sloppy. So how much blue fabric do I need exactly? Well, since I estimated that the actual length of the cape itself could be half the size of the width, so half of 58 is 29, I could fit it into side that square. And so I figured that 58 inches divided by a yard is 1.21 yards. But of course I need extra fabric for the neck band as well as the little strip of fabric that connects um, at the front of the cape. And so I rounded it up to two yards of fabric. And if you manage to find a red lining fabric with the same width, then that's great. You you don't need to do any more math. But since I was unable to find a red lining fabric that is also 58 inches wide, I had to do some more math to figure it out. So, okay, bear with me now because this gave me a big headache and I'm pretty sure that other people were staring at me at Joann's that day as I was trying to figure this out. So anyway, I found a red flannel that was 43 inches wide. And I figured that because the cape, when you fold it in half, the length of it is 58, and then half of that is 29. So the length here would be 29. I figured, oh, so if it's 43 inches width, just a single layer, and the length of this is 29, then all I have to worry about is the width. So I needed enough to scan like two halves of the cape. Like you see what I mean? So that way I could sew it together at one end and have that open slip. So that way I can just put it right onto the blue fabric and sew them all together. Like around these edges as I will explain later on in the video. So the math portion of this goes as such. So 58 times two that is 116 inches. And you divide that by a yard, and that is 3.2 repeating yards. And of course, because I want to make it easier, and so that way I have extra because, you know, I make mistakes, I rounded it up to 3.5 yards of red lining fabric. And how appropriate that there's a train outside right now. Now the next burning question on your mind right now may be, what's, what's this little thing right here? Or more likely, how do I figure out my neck radius? Because I know I'm going to have to cut that out later for the neck band as well as just cutting out that space in the circle right there. So the formula on how to figure out the radius of a circle is the circumference divided by 2 times pi. I measured the base of my neck just above the collarbone really loosely because I wanted to be comfortable and also just to leave a little bit more room in, in case I sewed it too tightly or I went over the seam allowance a little bit. And I came up with 13.5 inches. So 13.5 inches divided by 2 pi, and that equaled out to a radius of just over 2 inches. Well, if you wanted to be more particular, because I am particular, 2.1485 inches. And so that was the measurement that I came out with when I like made my own like 
protractor around uh, the neck area right there so that way I can cut it out. For this last bit right here, this was how I came up with the measurements for <laughs> the other rectangles of this project, which was the neck band itself, as well as the little flap of fabric that keeps the that connects the top of the buttons on the front of the cape. Now for this neck band, I had to cut it on the bias so that way it would conform to the curve of the hole itself. But I just estimated that the neck band, while also adding um, a half an inch seam allowance, it was the uh, circumference of my neck, so 13.5 plus one inch because uh, half an inch there, or like half an inch there, half an inch there, you get what I mean. And it came out to a length of 14.5 approximately, but actually because, well, I already finished the project, <laughs> spoiler alert, I actually just ended up holding the strip, like cutting it to the width that I wanted, which was four inches. So that way I would fold it over and it would be two inches plus the seam allowance on both sides, equaling up to five inch fabric. So what I did was I cut out a very long strip of like a five inch width of fabric. And then for the length, I literally just folded over the seam allowance because that was where I was going to put the hook and eye closures. I pinned it to the end of the cape. And then I pinned it all along the neckline here before actually cutting it to the length that I wanted, including that last of the seam allowance. So I folded it over and then it was the right amount. So yeah, 13.5 inches was kind of just a estimate when it came to cutting that out. I hope that makes sense. I'm really sorry if I'm confusing people. And then for the little strip of fabric in the front right here, it, it was really small. So like, I wasn't too worried about not having enough fabric because I bought so much of it. For the rest of the project, I used a half inch seam allowance or about a five eighths inch seam allowance. But for this little flap, I actually used a quarter inch seam allowance just because it was small and it was easy. So at a length of five inches plus the seam allowance of a half or a quarter inch on each side, I cut a strip that was 5.5 inches in length. And folding that strip hot dog style, I wanted it to be about an inch width. So two inches plus the seam allowance is two and a half inches. Okay, are we good? Are we all together? Am I a good teacher? I hope so because I, I, uh, <laughs> I hate this. Explaining is very hard. Now let's get to the sewing. I estimated that I needed two yards of blue twill for the outside fabric. And how I did this so that way I could cut it into a circle is that I folded it hot dog style and then folded it hamburger style. Since I don't have a giant protractor to make the perfect circle, I had to create one myself with some tape measure and chalk. I measured the sides of the square, which ended up being about 29 inches. And then I made marks all along, just like a protractor, so that way I can get the correct length. And then after that, I did a real careful trace all around those dots, and then I cut it out. I used the same technique to cut out the neck hole with the measurements I just acquired. And now since I have a big blue circle, I cut a slit down the middle to indicate where the cape would open up. The red flannel lining was trickier because I couldn't find one that was 60 inches long as well. So I had to do the math a little bit differently, but I estimated that I would need three and a half yards of that as well. I folded the fabric hamburger style and then laid the cape over it so that way I could cut two layers of it all the way around. Because I had to cut two fabric pieces for the lining, I had to attach them together to complete the circle. So I sewed one end with about a quarter inch or half inch seam allowance. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Now the most painstaking part of this project was attaching the fashion fabric and the lining together, wrong sides together. So I created a needle death trap, then went to the machine and sewed them all together around the ends, but not around the neck hole. So that way later I could have an entry to flip it all right sides out. I cut off all the excess fabric around where I just sewed, and then I decided to go back to the machine and sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance just to give it a bit more security. And also because I didn't feel like surging. I'm going to clean up this mess, and then it's back to that.
I probably should have done this before, but it wasn't until this time where I decided to actually iron the fabric. <laughs> Afterwards, I flipped the garment right sides out and then ironed all the edges down so that way they'd be flat. And how funny that I am also realizing as I'm editing this that you can't see a damn thing I'm doing because this cape is just so damn big. With the remaining blue twill, I cut out a neckband on the bias so that way I can sew it around the curve of the neckline better. I pinned it to the fashion fabric and sewed it down with a half inch seam allowance before flipping it over, ironing it down, and did my best to hand sew the hook and eye closures inside the casing so it was actually sewn inside of the seam allowance so that way it would be encased inside of the ends of the neckband. I hand sewn the rest of the neckband down onto the lining fabric using a ladder stitch, and I was careful not to poke through the fashion fabric on the other side. It was also around this point where I wished that I had a mirror down in my basement because I couldn't hook it for myself for the life of me. And when I tried it on, I was really proud of myself. It seemed like it was all coming together, but I had to add the final touches. I noticed that on Ward's costume, he has a small strip of fabric that connects the top two buttons on his cape. So I created that with two strips of fabric, sewing it down, flipping it right sides out, hand stitching shut the open end, and then adding buttonholes to each side so that way I could attach it easily and detach it easily. I got six flat gold buttons from Joann's that were about five eighths of an inch wide, and I hand sewed them all down and spaced them out with a spool of thread. Here she is! for my neck. I am happy. <laughs> this is actually like one of the easiest cosplays I could make. I mean, I don't have his gray pants. Well, are they gray or are they green? I couldn't really decide. And the boots, I do have like just regular black boots, but they're uncomfortable for me. But this, this is like, I could see myself just waltzing around town in this. Oh yeah, this, this gnome hat, I got it from Spirit Halloween and it was actually super cheap, but it does not fit my head at all. But just, just, I, I love everything about this. <laughs> and with that, my name is Wart. No, actually, my name is Kaylee. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want, and I shall see you over the garden wall. <laughs> Adelaide. Come on, join the Adelaide Parade. Adelaide, to Adelaide. We're going to Adelaide's house today. <laughs>